a hold down man, suitcase this, my cell phone, I'ma charge it on walk with a limp, get it knocked off or missing, you gon' get it, next time I see you ass, you gon' need airlifted. Hey everybody, you already know man, k for all TV back in the building, I appreciate everybody that's been tuning in, you know y'all go ahead, hit that like and subscribe button, make sure you hit that notification bell so you can see it first, alright, for the most part, I've been live streaming a lot lately, so I can, you know, have more time, you know, click and, and, and chat, you know, with people like on my lives, you know, so I can interact more with the people that, you know, support my channel and my movement. Um, today, I'm going to be go ahead and I'm going to be speaking to y'all about reception centers. Now, for those that have been to prison, know about reception centers. For those that haven't, that's why I'm making this video. Now, <clears throat> a reception center is facility that everyone has to go to. Like me, I'm from down south. So I had to go to SFRC, which is Florida, I mean, South Florida Reception Center. See what I'm saying? So in the state of Florida, we have four reception centers. We have SFRC, which is South Florida Reception Center, which is the one I would go to because I'm from down south. Then you have NFRC, which is, you know, North Florida Reception Center for the ones in Orlando. Then we have RMC, which is... Lake Butler, which is the medical, you know, center. Okay, those those three. And then the fourth one, we have Northwest Florida Reception Center, which is Washington Annex, which is up there in the panhandle. So you have them four in the state of Florida. Now, I've been through all of them. I went to all of them because when you get arrested and you get sentenced to prison, when you leave your county jail, the first place you go is to the reception center that is in your region. There's only three regions in the state of Florida. They have the Panhandle, then you got the, the middle, and then you have down here at South Florida, okay? But the reason there's four reception centers is because Butler is a medical center, all right? Now, when you first get arrested and they send it you to prison time or whatnot, when you leave your county jail, you are gonna go to the reception center that is in your region of your county where you were arrested from. <clears throat> For me, it was South Florida Reception Center. So as you transfer to your main compound, you're going to go through any reception center that is in that region. All right. Like, for instance, me, I got to South Florida. I was there for about three weeks after I found out where it was. You know, I was going, which let me backtrack. You don't know where you're going. But you know you're leaving the reception center. If you're not becoming a permanent, you're leaving the reception center. That's basically where they house you and they get everything in order until they send you to where you're going. For me, I didn't know this yet, but I was going to Calhoun CI, which is in the panhandle at the tip top. So that's why I had to go through all reception centers to get there. And then when I got transferred from there and landed at Charlotte CI... I had to go through all reception centers to come back down. So I was at South Florida Reception Center for about three weeks. Um, I tried to sign up for the masonry. I tried to like put into where, you know, I want to get my, you know, my trade in the masonry or whatever, because I tried to get put on the permanent side there at South Florida. The reason I tried to do that is because for anybody, it's always easier to get visos or anything you may have lined up or, you know, keeping in contact with loved ones or anything like that, the closer you are to home. That's what the difference is from prison and jail. Jail, you can get visos, phone calls, all this 24-7. You're right here. You're, you're right there. You're clearly in jail where you're from nine times out of ten. So it's easier. But once you go to prison, it's a different ball game. Now... It didn't turn out as I planned. You know, they said that I was going to get put on the permanent side. That's what classification told me because I put in for masonry. It didn't work like that. They came around. They knocked on my door. They told me, hey, you're being transferred. This was like three weeks later. Um, When I got transferred, I went to NFRC, which is the Orlando's reception center. Now... When you get to reception centers, it doesn't matter which one it is. You go through the same shit, okay? They're going to bring you in there. When you first go in there, you know, they're going to shave your head. You know, they're going to they're gonna shave your head. They're going to they're gonna get your picture ready so they can make your ID card. 
They make you watch the little DVD about don't take no honey buns off. Your, I mean, a little VHS tape, don't take no honey buns on your bed if someone puts it there. You know, they give you the rundown about Priya, which is prevention, which is uh, Priya, which is prevention. Um, Rape Elimination Act. That's what it stands for. <clears throat> now, this is basically where you go through everything. They're going to have the dentist look in your mouth. They're going to... They're going to do everything. They're going to have the dentist look in your mouth. They're going to they're gonna take blood from you. They're going to... Anything that is wrong with you, these people are going to find out. That's simple. They're going to find out if you got high blood pressure, if you got diabetes. They're going to find out if you got a damn STD. They're going to find out if you got hepatitis. They're going to find... Anything that you may possibly have wrong with you, these people are going to find out when you get here. This is where you are a lab rat. You come in, and these people are doing scientific shit to you. Now, South Florida, for the most part, they make you stand in a circle or whatever. You know, they make everyone stand there, and they make you strip, take every single thing off. You know, squat, cough, do all that and everything at the same time. You know, they get in your face to try to scare you. Um, Your first time going in there, they're going to try to scare you. They are going to try to pick someone off the bus to make an example of. But... Once you see that with your own eyes, if you ever land there again, like being transferred, you're going to go through those again. You're going to know not to fall for the shit. And you already got a feel of how prison is a little bit. Now, like I said, I was at SFRC for about three weeks. <clears throat> when they told me I was transferring, they brought us all back up there to the, to the intake, made us strip and do all this shit again that they normally do. They tell you when you first get there. They put a trash can right here, and they put a box right here. Everything you come with from the county jail, they're going to tell you. Anything you don't want, throw in that trash. Anything you want to send home, because you ain't allowed to keep nothing. So they're going to tell you, anything that you want to send home from your property, put in this box. Anything you do not want, throw in this trash. Now, when you put something in that box to send home, that means you have to pay for stamps and packaging and all that stuff to send it to your family and your money ain't going to get on for a couple more weeks and they only hold your property for about 30 days they give you up to 30 days to pay for the postage to ship your stuff to your family so normally when people get to prison you see everyone throwing theirs in the trash you know oh i'm wrong there's three a box to send it home throw it away or donate it there's three things that you choose from. So a lot of people be thrown in the trash or thrown at the donation. I didn't see no one sending anything home. Now, once 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 you go through all that and they put you in your dorm or whatever, you're in there or whatnot, and this is when you're going to get the first feel of prison. It's going to take a couple weeks for your money to get on. You can't call your family like you want to. You can have them send you your their their phone bills so you can you know get their number put on the phone list so you can call them. Or they can deny it because they got to literally send in their a contracted phone to show they actually have a contract with these people. No Metro PCS will work. I grew up down here, down south where Metro is what everybody has. So when I went to prison, it kind of hit me because I only had maybe 3% out of 100 in my life that had other than a Metro. You know, and that's what makes people decide to get cell phones and shit because, you know, you want to be out there and talk to people on the streets and learn what's going on the outside world. Now, for the most part, you go in there, whatever, when they put you in your cell, that's where you're at, boom, boom. And then they give you this paper. This is your orientation paper. It tells you what you're going to be doing for the next week when you're in prison. You're going to be running around like a chicken with your head cut off. They don't tell you where nothing's at. You know to just follow the group of people who came with you. All y'all are going through orientation. So if you see five people that came with you running over there around the corner, going over there into that building, then you know that's where you got to go. You know, everyone's got to be there. And you're going to see they got to do all these different. It's going to tell you. You got to be at like three or four different places a day. Medical, classification. Then you got to go up top again. Then you got to go over here and get your card activated. You got to do everything you got to do. You're running around like a chicken with your head cut off. So after that, they're going to eventually ship you. You don't know where you're going until the buses start breaking down. Ten people, say ten of us got shipped from South Florida Reception Center. When we land at the next reception center, five stay. 
Five, get on another bus and go somewhere else. Well, now we know we're going to another reception center. We're going higher up towards Butler. And then get there. Three, get off. Okay? And then now we're on a bus, two other people. So now you know it starts breaking it down to which camp it is you could be going to. So, for me, I got shipped from South Florida Reception Center, landed at Orlando, which is NFRC. When I was at Orlando, we got off. We had on some, uh, our handcuffs and shackles we had on, had red paint on them. All we did from South Florida Reception Center is travel to NFRC and in the cage, the Sally Port, we pulled up. We all got off, and there was a bunch of people out there shipping out from Orlando. We got off. Some of us stayed in Orlando Reception Center, NFRC, and some of us, some of us went on to the next reception center, which I was one of those. I got off the bus, me and, a several, me and like 50 other people, and like 15 of us, all we did was change handcuffs and shackles from the red ones, which belonged to the the South Florida Reception Center officers, they collected all their handcuffs and everything and took the ones off the inmates who they dropped off there. And then they put yellow ones on us. And which this is, the, these cuffs and shit belong to the, the runners of the NFRC officers. They put the, the yellow ones on us, put me directly on another bus and started shooting me up top. And this is when I landed at Lake Butler. Now, so I had to do te two buses in one day. They fed me lunch on the bus and everything. The first meal they gave me, like, as eating on the bus, I'll never forget. They gave us all all brown paper bag, and in it was two sandwiches, okay? We had a bologna sandwich in one and a, 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 a peanut butter sandwich in another one. And then stuck against the bread was a piece of coffee cake. There was like two sandwiches with coffee cake stuffed against it. It ain't going to always be the same, though. They might give you peanut butter, two peanut butter sandwiches. They might give you, you know, um, a bologna and a peanut butter or it might be cheese. You know, um, I've gotten cheese sandwiches on the bus there before with oatmeal, you know, so it's the same I'm, with oatmeal. I mean, uh, with coffee cake. So it's the same thing, but I'm pretty sure my first time on the bus transferring through the reception centers it was either bologna and peanut butter with a piece of coffee cake stuck to it or it was cheese sandwiches with a piece of coffee cake stuck to it so like i said i get off the bus they change my shackles put me on boom they feed us lunch now now they're sending us up and this is when i touch down in mrc which is the medical center which is lake butler okay Lake Butler's where I ended up staying at for like, I want to say seven days, a whole week. I had to wait till the next bus run for the panhandle to go up higher. So they sent me all the way from the bottom to the highest they could send me. I went through all the reception centers, my first time in prison. And um, I stayed there for about a week. I went through the same shit that I had to do at the other reception center. I had to, when I came in, you know, they strip searched me, made me squat, cough, do the whole thing, this and that, you know, try to scare you, made the nurses look at you. And um, rest in peace to my dad, but my dad used to always tell me, you know, when he was in prison back in the day, he traveled light, which means don't bring everything with you because you might leave with two bags that got 30 items in each bag and when you get to this reception center, boom, now you got two bags that got 15 items in each bag because they're going to start seizing stuff. They're going to they're gonna take stuff. You might make it when they go through your stuff. You might make it through this reception center. And then when you go to the next one, oh, they don't allow them books in here. Or no, they don't allow them them MPs. You, gotta, uh, is your, you got your receipt for that or this and that. They just start taking shit, knocking shit off. So by the time you get to where you're going, you literally don't have shit really left. If you do, you still lost a good percentage, you know? So when we get there, they took most of my stuff, you know, like books and different shit like that. Just stuff that I brought with me from South Florida Reception Center, okay? And then um, <clears throat> they put me... The only difference between this one is it was set up the same way as Calhoun. I didn't know this yet because I hadn't been to Calhoun, but it was open bays where I was at, at Buckler. It was open bays and I got put in G dorm. <laughs> so <clears throat> I'm there for about a week or whatever. You see the, uh, the, 
the permanents over there, they wear all white with a baby blue stripe going down them. But everywhere else in prison in Florida, we wear blues, which we wear the blues with the white stripe. But the permanents of South Florida Reception Center wear all white with the blue stripe. Now, when I got there or whatever, and I seen how it was, this is where I could, I felt like, you know, I was somewhere different than I'm used to. You know, these officers were real, you know, rednecky, you know, they were chewing on straws and stuff and, you know, they beat inmates and stuff like that. You know, anyone that's been to prison will tell you there's no play play at Lake Butler. Them officers will kill you, you know. So, um, <clears throat> I stayed there for about a week. Um, I broke it down before all the shit I went through while I was there. I'm just speaking on the reception centers alone, like how it is. So I remember when we first got off the bus, there's a huge pavilion with a bunch of tables under the pavilion. The officers, it's like as you're traveling from reception center or even if it's institution, institution, as you're traveling, they always have a cart, which is like a nurse cart, but they push it on wheels and it has everybody's folders in it. When you first go to prison, your folder's going to be thin. But then as you done been there for a while and you're getting transferred somewhere else, you're going to notice your folder's getting thicker. Anything you've been through, anything you got going on with classification, anything is going to be in that folder. So the officer put the folders right here at this first table, had all of us inmates sitting at the table. And this is when he broke it down. This is when he was like, okay, now out of us 40 people that were out there, the ones on the left are going to the panhandle. The ones on the right are going down south, like back towards Orlando. You see what I'm saying? So I was one of the ones that was like on the left that's going to the panhandle. I noticed they only called three camps. They called Santa Rosa, Calhoun, and Jefferson. Those were the three camps that they called to where I felt like, okay, I'm on one of them. And then you start noticing and peeping. Okay, this guy's still on the bus with me. And you know he's going to, you know, there'll be five people on the bus with you. And you'll be like, okay, well, them three are going to Calhoun. These two are going to Jefferson. Then y'all, next thing you know, boom, they off the bus. And then you realize you're still with these three. So you're like, I'm going to Calhoun. You know, because they're not supposed to let you know. But you eventually find out, like, on my way back down from the panhandle, I already knew when I went to medical, you know, at Washington, which is the next reception center I'm going to speak on. I already knew when I was leaving Calhoun, when I got to Washington, I already knew and seen on the paper it said Charlotte CI. So I knew where I was going because I'd have been in there so in prison now for a little minute to where people done told me, yeah, you just look at the paper because they're not supposed to show you. But when you sign, if you look, you can see where you're going. You can't ask them. They won't tell you. But anyways, on your way up, they ain't, you, you're not going to know none of this, you know? <clears throat> so, next thing you know, um, we're on the bus. We're leaving Lake Butler after I have been there for about a week. We're leaving early in the morning. As I'm leaving, boom, there's like five of us on the bus. Three are going to Calhoun, two are going to Jefferson. We stop at, I take that back, not Jefferson, Jackson. It was Jackson. We stop at Jackson C.I., and we let people off. And I see they didn't call my name. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to Calhoun. And, and then I was with these other dudes and we all went to Calhoun. But before we went to Calhoun, we had to go to NWFRC, which is the Northwest Florida Reception Center, which is Washington Annex, which is in Washington County, which is in Florida down here. But it's the tip top. Now, that is farther than Calhoun is from Lake Butler, you know, but I'm going to Calhoun, which is right here. Here's Butler. Here's Calhoun. Here's Washington, which is the, the top reception center. But since it's up there near that region, I, we had to literally go all the way up to that reception center just to stay there for two days or three days or something like that to come back to my camp. Now we drop people off at Jackson's at Jackson CI, and then we went up to Washington Annex, which is the NWFRC, the Northwest Reception Center. When I get there, it's totally different. They got a big old like driveway down the middle of the down the middle of the compound. It's big enough to where it could be a street. 
They got two-man cells on that side, and they got open bay on this side. Now, this is when I first came to prison, so I got put in open bay. Big old gun tower up there or whatever, watchtower. I got put in there. As soon as we get put in there, whatever, I see how it is. I notice these open bays are two times, maybe three times bigger than the ones that was at Butler. You see what I'm saying? And I've never seen any open bays that big ever in my whole bid. Even when I hit Calhoun after that. You know, even when I hit Calhoun, I never seen an open bay that big. It was so big and open. It wasn't like that at any place I've been that had open bay camps. Only that reception center. So, um, when I first walk in, you know, there's people, uh, I get put to where, boom, um, the people up under me, like the dude under me, he's a permanent and he's tatting someone and everything. So I get a bucket. It's a tattoo man, but I'm only there for two days. I'm transferring through. So I'm not friendly. You feel me? So I ain't going to talk or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, if they say, what's up, I mean, I'll introduce myself and shit, but then I keep it moving. I got my own goals and my own missions. You feel me? So my bunkie was cool as hell, though. You know, he chopped it up. I chopped it up a little piece. Boom, boom, boom. And then I stuck to myself. And then that's when I find out in like two days, I'm going to Calhoun. Now, they did the same thing at, at this reception center. When we got there, they brought us all in. They stripped us, went through all our property, did the whole nine and everything like that. You know, it literally took me almost damn near two weeks to get to where I was permanently staying when I left South Florida Reception Center. And I was in a different time zone, like from down south. It was only an hour difference, but it was still a difference. Like I remember being on that bus and it looked dark out. You know, it was dark and shit like that when they were trans when I was finally going to I felt like I was going to a different state, traveling on this bus in shackles, you know, and it was nothing I could do about it. You know, but just it is what it is. I belong to the state of Florida at the time, you know, so I gotta just take the good with the good and the bad with the bad. You know what I'm saying? They got in the back of the bus. They got a little thing that you're supposed to stick your meat in when you got to go pee in it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, but anyways, so the bus drives wasn't that bad, but I was in a different time zone. Like after count time at Calhoun, you know, it'd be nine o'clock when I call my peoples. And when I called them, you know, I mean, it'd be 10 o'clock. It'd be right before 10 o'clock. To them, it'd be 11, you know, to, so it'd be harder for them to answer. That means I got to call at like seven, so it's like eight to them, you know what I'm saying? Because then if I'm trying to call at 10 o'clock, it's 11 o'clock that, you know, people got to work tomorrow, you know, nine out of 10, they ain't going to answer. So it's a different time zone and you don't notice it because this is where you're at and this is how you're living. You're just like, what is it? Oh, it's this time, it's this time. You don't even notice that you're in a different time zone, you know, which is kind of like it's in, there's a different time zone in all different states, you know, shit like that. So I was in a different time zone and, um, Hold on, let me get back to the Washington part. So while I'm at Washington, I realize there's a lot of white inmates. I've never been at any camp ever in my life that had more white inmates than there. You know, that's the only place where I've seen straight white inmates. And it was like crazy, you know, because that's the top that's up north. You know, that's where they, you know, they don't hang out and say the word nigga. And they don't, you know, they don't do that. You know, it's different up there than it is down south where I'm at. Now, you come to South Florida Reception Center, you look and you see, you know, the race, the ratio of races is totally different. The officers got golds. The female officers got golds. You know, like, that's just how it is. It's two different. It's literally two different time zones. So, um, I'm at Washington. I'm there for like two, three days. The open bay is real big. You know, um, the way their showers are set up, it's different. Like, see, South Florida Reception Center, when you're there, they have showers. They're not in the cell. So you have cells in, at South Florida Reception Center. And then they have a shower. They have showers upstairs, shower downstairs. And then you get this wall. It's, like, made out of PVC pipes. It's, like, it's like shaped like the square with a sheet on both sides, like this, this waterproof sheet. And it stands up. As you're on the other side showering. So it could see your upper half, but it can't see your bottom half. And you move that. Some camps have that shit in the bathroom. So when you're taking a shit, you could just put it in front of you and you'll be talking to whoever. You know, some camps have that. But Charlotte and Calhoun didn't have that to where you, if you're sitting there talking to someone while you're taking a shit, you're 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 sitting there. You're you know what I'm saying? So but that's how it was at South Florida Reception Center showers. You have your own shower, but then you have this little thing you could put in front of you. Now 
um, at Butler, it was an open bay. So it was it was just like a wall, like a little five foot wall, like a four foot wall with just the eight shower heads, you know. And then at Washington, it was a bigger bathroom and it had like the same thing, but it had like um its own little section, like how the shower heads were. You press the button, like you press the button and it comes on you a little bit, the water. Press the button again, it comes on you a little bit. Like it ain't, it was it was the same shit though, it was just chrome. There was a lot of chrome, like the chrome little blockage of the wall, the chrome, chrome, chrome shower heads. You know, a lot of it was chrome. At Calhoun, I mean at, at Charlotte, their, their showers were like butlers with the little wall and the eight shower heads, but you have a nozzle, you turn down and the water stays on. You see, it wasn't a little button you press, you know? But anyways, that's like the box though. In confinement, it's a little button when you're in the shower. But um, so I was at South Florida Reception Center for a little while. Bunch of like white different inmates came up to me like, hey man, where you from? Like, you know, and I'd tell them, bro, I don't know you, bro. You don't know me. You know, because I learned that even in my county jail down here, like, when a white inmate sees another white inmate, they, like, get glory and they, like, want to talk and shit like that. You feel me? So, and I learned that in the county. You know what I'm saying? You could just see they're about to bring this person in the cell and he's in handcuffs and he looks and he see you could see him, like, lock eyes on you. Like, oh, that's who I'm going to go talk to, you know, to, to be cool with someone. So, I always would, like, you know, give him the shoulder. You feel me? So, that's what I did at, but I mean, at Washington. A lot of white inmates would be like... Hey, man, where you... And I'd be telling their teeth would be all rotted and shit from meth. And, you know, down here in South Florida, meth hasn't been no drug like that. Like, I haven't even seen meth on the streets. I've only seen meth in prison still to this day. Still to this day, I've never seen meth in real life other than in prison. I've never seen it on the streets. So these inmates will come up. They're like 21, 23, teeth all rotted, you know, from smoking meth and shit like that. So, um... You know, a lot of them try to be cool, and they, and they see I wasn't friendly. I didn't care myself like that. I'm the only one that walked around with my shirt off, and I did that because here, when I was in the county, you know, I was in the box when I got sent to prison. I mean, I wasn't in the box when I got sent to prison. I had got out of the box and was out of the box for like 14 days in max custody, black and white, in the Broward County Main Jail. So we don't get wrecked like that. We don't get outside wreck. So now that I can walk around with my shirt off, I look so pale. So now that I can walk around with my shirt off, I did. You know, so I stood out. I was different from them. You know, I, I was, you know, I stood out. And then I'd freestyle in my head as I walk around the dorm. I'm rapping and shit, you know. So people probably thought, oh, he's talking to himself or whatever. But really, I was just, I'd always just rap to myself. And then um, this is when I found out in two, three days. All right, boom, boom, boom. They pat my bone and they're like, hey. Oh, you're transferring out of here. So now I'm like, all right. The next day, I see the same people I know that are going to Calhoun. <clears throat> that's when I'm like, all right, I'm going to Calhoun. And then that's when I got transferred and I went to Calhoun and got off the bus at Calhoun. They did the same thing. The squat, cough, went through all my stuff, took a bunch of shit like they did at every other place, you know, because um, nothing's guaranteed in prison, you know, nothing at all. They could take anything they want from you. They can literally take your, they're not supposed to, they can take anything but your law work. But I've seen them take people's law work. That's just how they are. They don't care what you say, they will take that shit. And, you know, that's just how it is. And there's no way of proving they took it. You see what I'm saying? So it's just, it, they just do some fuck shit. So um, that's how it was for the most part, the reception centers. So keep this in mind. If you, you know, knock on wood... I'm not justifying prison. I'm just trying to let people know if they are going up the road, if they want to know what their loved one went through when they went up the road, why they were going through all these camps. Because, you know, a lot of people be worried when they see, oh, he's transferred here, he's transferred here, he's transferred here. Nah, nine times out of ten, ten times out of ten, if he is going to a, per a camp that is in a totally different region, he's got to go through the reception centers. There's no way you're going to go from... Charlotte to Butler. You see what I'm saying? Like, I mean, Charlotte to DeSoto. You got to go through the reception centers. Even if it's just a pit stop to get you, run you through the computer, they are going to bring you through the reception centers. You see what I'm saying? Now, for me, my family thought I got in some shit and thought I got in trouble and got stabbed or something like that because when you get to Butler, which is 
RMC, the medical center, when your family looks it up, it says medical center. So my family was all worried, you know, thinking, oh my God, what happened to him? And, and you know, this and that is that we ain't been able to talk to him yet because our phones ain't been approved. You know, shit like that. So your family might think that you got sent or got hurt. That's why you're at a medical center. They don't know no better. You get what I'm saying? But really, that's what comes up when you're at Butler, you know. But everyone is going to go through the reception centers if you're going to that region for your camp. Now, if you're going from if you're going from South Florida Reception Center and your main camp is over near Orlando, you're only going to go to NFRC, the North Florida Reception Center, and then you'll stay there for a couple, you know, you'll stay there for a little while, and then you'll go to your main camp that's around there. You won't be going to Butler and Washington and all that unless your camp is in that region but is high up near butler then they will bring you to butler and then you'll go to your camp you see what i'm saying but for the most part you don't have to travel through them all unless you're going near that region but if the reception center is a little ways farther than your camp you are going to that your camp will be here and you'll see it'll go and then it'll go it'll, it'll bring you to that reception center you know and that's just what it is but um like I said, this video is just strictly on reception centers. You know, I wanted everyone to know what it's like when you go there. You know, what it is you're going to go through or what even the meaning of the reception center is. It's basically to get everything in line for you to see what the hell is wrong with you. To see what the hell you're allergic to. What your likes and don't likes is. What your weight is. What, you know, like they're going to figure out how much you weighed when you came there. They're going to take your picture, shave your head. They're going to get all your tattoos, write down all your tattoos. They're going to sit there and they're going to write down every single tattoo it's going to be in your description he has 10 to, it's going to say tattoo on his head says this 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 right arm this 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 bottom foot this 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 side this 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 middle of the chest this they're going to have all your stuff written like to a t they're going to figure you out when you first come in there and then i just that's why i wanted to make this video to break it down to y'all about the reception centers you know, because that is something that everyone's going to go through. You're not going to leave your county jail and go straight to your permanent camp. You are going to go to a reception center first. So that's why I wanted to break it down. Out of the three regions we have, there are four reception centers. There's South Florida Reception Center, North Florida Reception Center, Butler, which is only the medical center. And then the top one, which is Northwest Florida Reception Center, which is Washington Annex, which is in Washington County. Okay. So um, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Um, go ahead, hit that like and subscribe button. And um, you already know I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna make the announcement of the giveaway when my bracelets that I got coming in are coming. Like I said, they're not the same as this, but they are the same silicone texture. But they are K for All TV bracelets. But um, anyways, um, I appreciate everyone that's been rocking with me. I'm gonna try to give y'all content every day, every other day. Keep you know what I'm saying. Keep everyone motivated. And let's get it, man. You already know, man. Um, protect you and yourself from this coronavirus. And, um, you know, just make sure you and your loved ones have everything you need to survive. If they quarantine or whatever they have to do, you know. Um, but like I said, man, you already know this. K-Frog.